First of all, I want to state straight up to all the Kino Warriors, I like Kino Body. I mean, it should be obvious by the title, but to be fair, I can make this video be 99% positive, make one Greg the type of guy comment at the end, and all the Kino Warriors would be all over my ass. That's just how the human brain works. But despite the criticism of Kino Body that is mean to death, I do have to give credit to Kino Body for not only changing my fitness life, but my life in general. You see, when I first heard of Kino Body, it was through the usual bashment videos of him, namely from the usual drama suspects of Filion and Greg Duchette. And just hearing him and watching his incredibly cringe videos made me think of him as a moron who I shouldn't pay much attention to. But as I heard his name pop up throughout the years, I slowly became more interested in what he was all about. Like, I would watch Greg Duchette videos of his diet, and he was eating Rice Krispie treats and ice cream, yet I'm also seeing videos of him inclined benching 275 for reps. So my interest got to bear with me, and I decided to give his channel a chance, to fully understand how this guy had the physique and strength he had, despite being such a laughed at person in the fitness community. And through the months of watching his videos, in a way, I was almost hypnotized by them. Because even though they're all pretty much the same, it was nothing like I'd ever heard or seen before. And all I could think was, this guy is a freaking genius and was everything I've ever wanted to hear in fitness. And this is why I think Kino Body is great. Because he spreads the right word about not only fitness, but ideas for life in general. First off, let's start off with his unique fitness ideas. His insane promotion of strength and RPT has been so beneficial for me and makes such a big difference. I always knew that training six days a week wasn't optimal and I was going to the gym doing an insane amount of volume, usually dreading the end of my workout because I knew I still had three sets of 10 for three different exercises. Just flat out not fun. But at the same time, I didn't see the appeal of being a strength athlete, spending 30 minutes in the gym lifting as much as possible and then leaving. Kino Body opened up my eyes because let's face it, he has a look that so many guys my age want and the performance. He has a look that guys want and the girls aren't repulsed by. And he isn't just a pretty boy face, he's a complete badass. Incline pressing near 300 for reps, weighted pull-ups for 3 plates, repping 200 pound weighted dips, getting a 2 plate standard press, and he squats 370 for a double. Or well, at least that's what the pistol squat says he does. But point being, he has a look and performance that many men desire. And he says a lot of good things, but a lot of things that people in the fitness world would dismiss at, with Greg being the outlier. The obvious one being his fasting methods. Sure, there's plenty of research against fasting. It's probably not optimal for strength gains, and not great at all for muscle growth. Heck, a 21 year old guy like me should probably not even consider fasting. And grant, I haven't really with the amount of activity I've been doing this summer, putting my calories burned and appetite sky high, eating my first meal usually 2 or 3 hours into the day. But my goodness, throw all the science out the window, because this fasting stuff is fun. I remember when I first started playing around with it, I couldn't believe how enjoyable and fun it was to literally have a big slice of cheesecake at night and maintain and sometimes even lose weight regularly. It was also so fun to be introduced to the magic of black coffee and getting focused on whatever I was working on. I don't know about you guys, but when I ate a big meal early in the day, I either feel sluggish the entire day or take a nap, which is detrimental to do so early in the day, which completely screws up my sleep at night and is often what leads to my 6,000 calorie plus binge days. And since I was all about living the strict diet lifestyle before Kino Body, when I had a cheat day, boy did I have a cheat day. But again, I was so unproductive the entire day and basically it ruined my entire week as I was so focused on not messing up and weighing myself every night to make sure I got back to a normal weight. Basically, fitness was ruining my life. The other problem I had was if I had a little snack early in the day, or you could call it a little breakfast, that would usually make me even more hungry than I already was and I couldn't concentrate, which again, in some cases, led me to binge and this cycle just kept repeating. With fasting, I no longer worried about any of this and oh my goodness did my life change for the better. And especially being a drummer, fasting works out perfect to my schedule. I can get work done for the first 5-6 to six hours a day, sipping my black coffee very slowly and concentrating fully on my work and not worrying about food whatsoever, and then have a filling first meal slash big snack, play my drums for an hour or two, which would usually skyrocket my appetite, have another big meal, and then relax the rest of the night, knowing my final meal would completely satisfy me before bed. And man, did my sleep and overall productivity increase so much due to this. And not only was my lifestyle and productivity the best it had ever been, but my gym performance shot up like never before. Because despite fasting not being the best idea to do before lifting heavy, I was motivated and consistent for the first time ever. And this past year, I brought my deadlift from 435 to 500, 
overhead press nearly my body weight for reps, benching nearly 1.5 times my body weight, squatting over 2 times my body weight for a max, and using 100 pound dumbbells for reps on things like Bulgarian squats and dumbbell bench press. Again, all this usually while fasted, or at the very most a light protein bar and yogurt meal. And that could be the point of fitness in general. It's better to be consistent and go hard on something that may not be optimal as opposed to doing the best possible program but not being consistent on it and you don't look forward to it. And man, there's no better feeling than hitting a big time PR, having a big meal right after, all while maintaining a very lean physique. So for a guy like me, Kino Body was everything I wanted about fitness and will forever be thankful as I'm going to enjoy this fitness journey the rest of my life and not be held back by it like I was a couple years ago. But there were more specific things about Kino Body that drew me in as opposed to the obvious. His idea of not taking legs seriously is usually laughed at. And as I laughed along with everyone else, I would also look in the mirror and see my massive love handles despite having a six pack. It could barely fit into a nice pair of jeans. I realized at that point, I didn't want to be some massive leg bodybuilder who squats 500 pounds. I was perfectly happy with being pretty strong everywhere and being able to dress stylish and not being insecure about my lower body looking like a woman. And Keto Buddy was really the first person to stress that it's not all about being a man and lifting heavy squats till you puke because again, there's more to life than fitness and this was exactly what I needed to hear. Especially since my squat and deadlift were already pretty decent but my upper body was atrocious for a 20 year old. I think my max bench was maybe 225 and max OHP was 150 or so. With novice to early intermediate numbers on all other upper body lifts that Kino Body promotes, such as the weighted dip, weighted pull up, and the incline bench. So I decided to go all in on the Kino Body program. And while I didn't pay for it, I mean, for God's sakes, it's 2021, guys. Don't pay for programs. I followed Kino Body to a T. Upper body lifts on Monday and Friday with functional lower body lifts such as Bulgarian squats, hand cleans, and pistol squats on Wednesday. My progress was decent. I mean, I definitely started to build a base on things like the weighted pull up and chin up, but I was still struggling to progress on other lifts like the overhead press and bench press movements. And most importantly, being that this was the first time I had ever really stopped deadlifting squatting, my eating went through a massive adjustment period. As yes, I had to eat less due to not hitting my legs as hard, but at the same time, I wanted to put on muscle, so I really didn't know how to go about my calories. It also took me a while to transition to the bodybuilder type who steered at upper body bros who did do squats and deadlifts to then realizing I was not one of them, but I was doing this for a reason. But that was the problem. Despite everything my mind told me I need to go through with this, the squats and deadlifts were calling, and I remember very clearly around 4 months after I stopped squatting, I saw a Kino Warrior on Instagram struggle to squat 2 plates, and at that moment, I knew I needed to go back to my lower body lifts. And that's the thing, like I said earlier, sometimes you just got to do something you want to do, even if you know it's not optimal. Bringing my squats and deadlifts up over a combined 100 pounds has certainly done me no favors in fading into skinny jeans, but it has me motivated to hit my upper body just as hard as to hit my lower body. And knowing I get to eat so much every day due to training the lower body hard has given me even more motivation to train hard, and I'm really enjoying it. And plus, being a male drummer, skipping legs is not the best idea. The point I'm getting at with all this is that I was able to use Kino Body to my advantage and use his strategies for life, and for that I'll always be thankful for. And this guy has a right idea about fitness that appeals to certain types of guys, especially around my age. But the problem when it comes to Kino Body is that I still feel like he gives off the wrong idea about fitness, despite having the right idea, and kids who view him still fall for the classic fitness traps. But before I get into all the problems with Kino Body, let me go through one more time everything great about him, so all the Kino Warriors who are about to go off in the comments can calm down. His position on getting strong while staying lean is by far the look that most guys want, not the bodybuilder 200 pound look that is usually promoted. And training 3 days a week is by far the best way to make strength gains. There's nothing to be ashamed about when it comes to fasting and skipping legs. If you love fasting, by all means skip breakfast and feast on the foods you love at night. If you're insecure about your big legs, don't go as intense on them and focus on those upper body lifts as it's obviously harder to progress on the upper body. But most importantly, fitness should be fun. Even the people who love training get their wrong idea. How many times do you see Instagram posts saying something along the lines of, you got to want it and make sacrifices to be the best? I mean, to some extent this is true, but you shouldn't be missing out on other aspects of your life just to weigh five less pounds or add an extra 10 libs to your lifts. Fitness should be about getting strong and it should add to your life, not take away from it. And Kino Baye was really the first person I heard online to preach that, and he deserves mad props for that, and I'm forever thankful. But here lies the issue with Kino Baye, and where he resorts to the usual fitness influencer problems. He doesn't practice what he preaches. Every week or so, 
Greg usually posts an Instagram story or even makes a post about one of his clients' transformations. Now, say whatever you want about them, that they don't even look that good, probably injected some stuff into their bodies, whatever. Because to me, it's not about the transformation. Again, you see transformations on virtually every fitness trainer's Instagram. What makes Keto Body stand out to me is his strength and great lifestyle, not just his body. Instead of just showing us these guys' transformation, show us them inclining 225 for reps, two plate chin ups for reps, dipping in the mid 100s, and overhead pressing their body weight for reps. Are these guys really enjoying life on the fasting lifestyle? And if they are enjoying the fasting train element, do they have anything else to offer other than that? Keto Body said himself, a six pack isn't that cool if that's all you have to offer. And this is where I think Kino Body sends the wrong message. A kid who's scrolling along Instagram sees one of his ads and may check out his page. He then sees those Instagram transformations just like he sees on all other influencer pages who promotes the basics and fitness and in general give off the wrong idea about how fitness should be. Even if these kids look into Kino Body and hear what he really has to say, chances are it will go in one ear and out the other because again, they are so used to hearing the common bro science of fitness and will assume these people's transformations are following the norm. And again, since Greg isn't showing off these people's lifts and lifestyle, you can't blame these kids for not following Greg's advice. What Greg should do is post a video of his clients under 10% body fat over at pressing 200 pounds, or show off the big meals his clients are eating, or heck, even show them in other parts of their life, like if they're progressing, getting better at their business, making a good living, and simply not letting fitness and their muscles define who they are. That will give kids who see these posts a better idea of what Kino Body and fitness in general is all about. Heck, Greg himself in his videos gives off the wrong message. I mean, just listen to this. You know, get, if you want to fucking get ripped and then take a fucking, get a sick photo shoot and use those photos on your Instagram or on freaking Tinder so you can go meet hotties, that's way, that makes way more sense to me. Way more sense. So we're really at the point now where it's all about posting shirtless selfies on Instagram to get laid? Again, if you're at the point in life where you're more concerned about getting girls than anything else, you'll never achieve anything outside the gym. And that's a serious problem that contradicts everything Greg says about living your best life. Because if you're putting your self-worth into how many girls you get, or how many thirsty chicks you're getting DMs from on Instagram, you're simply missing out on so much in life. And I know it's not like a broken record, but if you were to see this keto body video, or one similar to this, where he's hanging out with and banging hot chicks, People are going to become gym cells, be strict about their diet, and just be miserable in hopes they can get 10 out of 10 girls like Kino Body. At the end of the day, Greg knows that this is the stuff that draws people into his programs, and let's face it, the dude is a marketing genius, to the point where even his biggest fans can't help but make a great this type of guy comment. You want to know why Greg has hot girls around him all the time? You think it's due to the way he looks? I mean, of course his looks don't hurt, but even if he was overweight, he would still pull in chicks to his place left and right. Because girls love the muscle of your wallet far more than any muscle on your body. And that's the other thing. Keto Body has a million dollar mansion and has the Greek god look, and he's actually had girlfriends dump him. Do you know how bad you have to be with women to get them to dump you with everything you have to offer? It just goes to show you guys, no matter how cliche it may sound, looks are not everything. Which is why I'm disappointed to see Kino Body so obsessed with that and market the same usual BS that you're automatically going to get women fawning over you just because you have a six pack. But unfortunately, the marketing towards physique isn't the only problem in dark side Kino Body. You see, the man is a marketing genius and the only reason why he became so successful in the first place was due to him stealing an idea and making it more marketable. You see, Kino Body stole all his information from Mark and Burkan, the founder of Lean Games, and made it more marketable to the college age type man. Martin Burkham was all about living a fun lifestyle, but at the same time, was very strict about it. His intermittent fasting window was a strict 8 hours, was insanely high in protein, very low calorie on off days, and workouts were even more minimal than Keto Body, the difference being that Martin included deadlifts and squats. Now first things first, Martin Burkham is an absolute asshole. We may all make fun of Keto Body and his narcissistic attitude, but nobody would even be bothered to make a Martin the type of guy comment because they would be too repulsed to even waste their time to make fun of him. And to an extent, this is the kind of guy who Kino Body wants his audience to avoid being. Martin has more of that bulky bodybuilder type look, it's all about a strict lifestyle, if you don't want to do it, then you're a pussy. So it makes sense that Kino Body would take advantage of a guy like this, who is about as unmarketable as one can be, and use his marketing skills to perfection, and preach about the lifestyle over results. Because let's be honest guys, marketing pulling nearly 3 times your body weight for reps and squatting double your body weight for reps is not something that's very easy to market to 20 year olds who are simply all about getting laid. Keto Body's upper body bro minimalist style training is much more appealing. 
And again, massive credit to Kinobody for getting rid of the 16-8 feeding window nonsense and making your diet and lifestyle as enjoyable as it can be. But the fact of the matter is guys, Kinobody was a former client of Martin's and stole his stuff to basically market to the lazy. And look, I'm not saying reaching Kinobody's strength standards are lazy, but again, I guarantee you the people that actually reach his Greek God standards on his programs make up less than 1%. It's all about style for Greg, which is why he promotes so much of the aesthetics, as this is what drives teens to his programs as opposed to Mario, who calls you a pussy for not squatting and deadlifting. To me, there needs to be a happy medium. Live a fun lifestyle, but don't get caught up in the whole aesthetic business. I think I personally have found that balance, but unfortunately, I think 99% of the population who follow or don't follow these programs won't get that. The last problem with Kinobody is the nanny debate. I won't get too much into it, as there are plenty of other fitness YouTubers who make their living off nanny or not, but one thing I learned a long time ago when someone is borderline, it is to think about this. If you're making a living off how you look and specifically want a certain look, chances are you can't even risk the chance of going natty and miss out on maximizing your full potential. I'll just leave it at that. So to put this frank, Kinobai is one of the most interesting men in the fitness community, as he represents everything that's great about fitness and everything that's bad about it, especially within the community. He's really the only guy to sell the idea that you can get in great shape and have fun with it, with great strategies to do it. The problem is, at the end of the day, he is a businessman and takes advantage of a bunch of kids who are drawn in by the Lamborghinis and hot chicks as opposed to living a great lifestyle with also some other schemish things he is hiding from you. It's so frustrating too because for every video I see of him doing some great feat of strength, no matter how legit it may or may not be, I see him marking stuff that just shouldn't matter when it comes to fitness and in general living your best life. There are plenty of other fitness influencers who sell you this unrealistic influencer lifestyle and Kino Body is just so much better than these people. So if you are a Kino Warrior watching this video and wondering why you're not living the life that Kino Body does, just please consider that at the end of the day he is a businessman and that obsessing over aesthetics will get you nowhere in life. Use his strategies to help better all your components of life, not just in hopes of getting laid. With that said, thank you guys so much for watching, and for one last time, this is not a hate video, but being such a massive fan of Kino Body who is able to see through him, I felt this was a video I had to make, if not just for the sake of getting it off my chest. If you like what you see, then hit that like and subscribe button as I make an assortment of content. Have a good one, guys. James.